Your brethren were at their commandment. Now, so here's the ones that had understanding of the times, of what's going on. You know, there are some people understand more about what's going on in the world than others today. And so it is, God has given wisdom in certain areas to different people, and that's why the church is closely knit together and makes one body that can then perform what God wants done. Verse 33 of Zebulun, such as went forth to battle, expert in war, with all instruments of war, 50,000, which could keep rank. They were not of double heart. Uh, keep rank. If you're a military person, then you understand what that means. It means you can march together, you can do what you're supposed to do, and get the job done. <laughs> Verse 34, Naphtali, a thousand captains, and with them was... Uh, with shield and spear, 37,000. Uh, so there's a thousand captains come out of Naphtali uh, with shield and spear, 37,000 with them. Uh, wow. I, I mean, are you getting a glimpse of what the Lord has done in bringing Israel to David? And they're coming with one accord, all these mighty men, the armies of King Saul are now King David's. Verse 35, and of the Danites, expert in war, 20 and 8,600. And of Asher, such as went forth to battle, expert in war, 40,000. On the other side of Jordan, of the Reubenites and the Gadites, and of uh, the half-tribe Manasseh, with all manner of instruments of war for the battle, 120,000. Uh, the city's filling up. How many people are in, anybody know the approximate population of Albany? The Albany Schenectady? Uh, but can you imagine getting the, the hundreds and hundreds of thousands together here? Um, you know, to where you, you got a million people or so just about gathered together. Uh, so all these hundreds of thousands. Uh, verse 38, all these men of war that could keep rank came with a perfect heart to Hebron. There's the big thing. They came with the right attitude. They had the perfect heart. Abner was a big part of seeing that that happened, by the way. Uh, again, going back and seeing that David was a part of the nation. He was a loved part of the nation, and so that helped him to uh, have these people come with a perfect heart to Hebron, to make King uh, David king over all Israel, and all the rest also of Israel were of one heart to make David king. Uh, so the house of Saul was gone, and now all Israel is going to make David king. He was, had been anointed to be king uh, years before. <clears throat> And so with all this going, all this gathering, you say, well, the little, the little bake shops and things probably couldn't keep up. The restaurants couldn't keep everything going there. And so uh, here, look at what God does. He, he has some people that are thinking about that, verse 39. And there, there they were with David three days, eating and drinking, for their brethren had prepared for them. Moreover, they that were nigh them, even unto Issachar and Zebulon and Naphtali, uh, that's the, the closest nations, the closest uh, states around there, the closest tribes, um, it says, uh, they brought bread on asses and on camels and on mules and on oxen and meat, meal, cakes of figs, and bunches of raisins and wine and oil and oxen and sheep abundantly. For there was joy in Israel. <laughs> what a time as they gathered together. And then you have somebody that's even thinking about uh, some outside needs. Well, with all these people coming, we better, better get the pack trains loaded up and get going. And they gathered all these goods. Because you can imagine what it was like to try to feed uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of hundred thousands. <laughs> wow. So anyway, they did it. Hebron is where uh, David was, they made him king. 
And we saw that, uh, how they came from Shinar of Egypt unto Hemath and from Dan to Beersheba. Uh, all Israel came to David uh, in Hebron. And we read that in 2 Samuel 5, uh, 1 to 3 also there. And so David had a great group and of course, he wasn't the one that was ever really put out of Israel. It was just that the, the feud between King Saul and the fear of David because Saul had rejected the Lord and disobeyed him and the Lord would no longer talk to him or lead him or guide him. And so King Saul was on his own and it wasn't a pleasant way to be. Now you need to walk with the Lord. You need to do what the Lord has for you to do and do it uh, with the right heart. Uh, like we see all these men, all these people coming back to, uh, to Hebron, to David there, to make him king. Okay, well, uh, let me just mention uh, that. I'll stop there. Any questions on any of that? Or did, is that something that, I mean, you don't often sit and think about the numbers that came to David in Ziklag down in Philistine territory that came to him at Hebron. I mean, it's just phenomenal when you think of that, even when they had the numbering uh, in the, uh, during uh, the time of uh, taxing when they went to their home place. Uh, they didn't have those kind of numbers because some of them were already born in their tribes and wherever. And so it wasn't like the whole nation came together. But this was all the mighty men. And of course, all their families were all akin with them. Said all Israel was, was for, for him. Um, and, and so they were having a great time there for three days. All they did, everybody just communed with each other and had a big feast and time of, of that. You know, in this life we have today, we don't have times like that. I can remember more when I was a child, how, boy, you'd take, a, like if there was a, a, a camp meeting type thing or something going on, uh, people just put aside their work. They did their minimum chores if they were close at home or else they got somebody else to do them. And, and you'd go and you'd, the fellowship of the families that came together and heard the preaching of the word and all these things were just phenomenal. To, I remember that so, so profoundly and what effect it had on my life. Well, we did get a letter from Scotland, the first one since they got back there, the Hodnett family. And there's a lot, of, lot in this, and so I'm gonna take a few minutes here uh, to read this. Dear pastor and church family, <clears throat> as I sit to write this newsletter, I have just made my return to Scotland three weeks ago. <coughs> Furlough has definitely been a whirlwind. It was such a joy to be back in the place where God has called me. First of all, I want to say that I'm thankful the Lord protects us in times of trouble and sickness, even when we do not realize how sick and how big the trouble. When we arrived in America on furlough, I had been battling some minor health issues. Uh, if you recall, he had had COVID before that and just couldn't seem to get over it, uh, all the problems that he was having with it. Uh, so I've been battling some minor health issues. I knew that I was tired and not feeling well, but I just marked it up to how busy we'd been. In November, I had the flu, which turned into bronchitis and so soon caused laryngitis. In the midst of all that, I had kidney stones. I passed, uh, pressed through the suffering of this body, trying to stay busy in the work we came to America for, to report, to raise additional support. On January 15th, I was preaching at a church in Oklahoma and just had begun reading my text when I felt very hot and a bit dizzy. I had to stop preaching as my vision began to get dark. I thought I was about to pass out. Uh, thankfully, there were EMTs in the church and immediately came to my side. Paramedics were called, my blood sugar was 531. <laughs> I was taken to the emergency room and seen very quickly. The Lord protected me for several months as I believe I was battling this for quite a while. I'm thankful to have it sorted and on medication that has helped me feel normal again. 
I'm maintaining my glucose, glucose now and ideal numbers. Never miss a prayer for your missionaries. You never know when your prayer is what helped them in the moment of trouble. Just a few weeks into our furlough, and the Lord allowed several churches to take us on to support. We took a special trip out to visit with my sister Evelyn, who had been battling cancer for over a year. I'm so grateful we were able to spend some time with her. The Lord decided to take her home on December 7th. I drove back to Missouri to preach their funeral, and it was evident that Evelyn knew the Lord, and the joy that she carried spilled over into the families and friends. We enjoy seeing Ginger's family over the holidays, and it was good to see my parents and siblings as well. Many of you have been praying for my 12-year-old great-niece, Emma. I am so thankful that we were able to see her and her family. She's been battling cancer as well, this 12-year-old, and on February 14th, she made the crossing to eternal rest with our Lord. So please pray for her family. We're grateful for the time spent in America, but we are thrilled to be back in our beloved Scotland. We have many plans for this upcoming year. We have many visitors that plan to come and large outreach covering 10 towns in 10 days. Pray for these outreaches to bring people to our services and ultimately to the Lord. We need to print leaflets and church information for this outreach and we'll need to raise the funds for this. We would like to put a packet together with our testimonies in track form our church information of small John and Romans. We are trusting the Lord to do a mighty work through this outreach effort. I'm so thankful for you, for the support, for the special gifts, but especially your prayers. Continue praying for us. We are, we're able to get a good deal on an eight passenger van, although after a thousand miles of driving, the van is broken down and is currently in the shop. We have applied for a rental house just outside of Dumfries. The landlord and rental agency have agreed with us on a rental price. We are now awaiting the final application process to be completed. While we wait, we are very blessed to have missionary friends that are allowing us to stay with them at this time. We are trusting the Lord to let it all work out in his time. Uh, in his service, Jody Hodnett. So, uh, good letter from them. We'll stop there. And take a break. Amen. God bless you.